Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch. I'm often asked by witches and non-witches alike how I incorporate sort of witchcraft into my everyday or whether I incorporate witchcraft into my everyday and the automatic answer is unconsciously. So I thought I would tell you in a little more detail my top tips of how to incorporate witchcraft into your day to day completely unconsciously and naturally. So this video has been kindly sponsored by Aura. And so let's have a look at what Aura can offer to you. Aura is a new mindfulness and sleep app that is used by over 7 million people and it won the Best of Apple Awards. It has thousands of meditations, stories, CBT, life coaching, life analysis, breathability and spirituality. So Aura's content is created by hundreds of expert coaches and therapists from around the world. So you can speak to them in your own language, in your own time zone. So I have used Aura to help with my sleep. I have been having a few issues recently about getting to sleep and then staying asleep, possibly to do with the fact that I'm getting a little older and I I um, can't sleep as well as I used to. And so I have used Aura as a meditation app specifically to help me sleep. I have used it only for a few minutes every single night before I go to sleep. And over a course of 30 days, I have found that by the end of it, I was falling asleep and kipping quite frankly, with the best of them. And so this is what I'd like to challenge you to do. If you are struggling with stress or anxiety, um, lack of sleep, feelings of frustration and depression, why not try the 30-day challenge from Aura? Aura is not a one-size-fits-all app. There's hundreds of personalised guides and therapists online now who you can reach out to for help. Witchcraft is just the movement of energy and Aura particularly resonates with this because you can find like-minded professionals to help you achieve your goals. Why not get started completely for free? Because with my link, which I've put down in the description box below and you'll see on screen at the moment, the first 500 people to sign up using my link will get exclusive free trial with a 25% off. This is a limited time offer so do go for it now. If you need help this can be the app for you. Thank you Aura for sponsoring this video. The first tip I'm going to give you is about when you wake up in the morning. During our dreams, I might have prophetic dreams, I might have visitations, I might have psychic attacks. And so I need to just ensure in the morning that all is well, I don't need to do anything or I do need to do something to keep myself all energetically free from constraints. I've detailed this in my witchy morning routine video, which I'll put up here for you. And do have a watch of that because it's got a lot of information in it about how you might like to go about doing your morning routine. But for all those new or even old witches alike, my top tip, and this is one of the greatest things I can tell you to do, is to keep it's not every single dream that you're going to have. Some of them are your mind just, you know, recovering from the day and processing the information that it went through. But some dreams will be prophetic of future events, will be dreams about being visited and astrally visited by your friends or loved ones, by the world of spirit. Or you can likewise be attacked. And these tend to be nightmare dreams. And, you know, nightmare is a big red flag for me and you need to immediately cleanse everything if you have them. And if you're not sure what your dreams are, just write down what happened in them and take a couple of minutes just to think about what they might be pointing you towards. And it won't necessarily be that day that you will come to an answer. It might be in three weeks' time when you reread your dream diary. Well, I had a situation not so long ago where I dreamt about being in Spain with my dogs and meeting my English neighbour. And then that happened. It was just a split scene, but it came to me in a dream and it was a prophecy dream. So this is why I think it's important to write it down, because it gives you major validation that your dreams aren't just the product of your mind unwinding from all the stress of the day. Let's move on to my tip number two. Now, my morning routines are horrific. You know, I get up, I do all my witchy stuff just to make sure everyone's safe. And then I advance upon the children, get them out of bed. We spend a lot of time with me going, where are your shoes? Have you got your bag? What do you mean you need a packed lunch today? 
before we get in the car, drive to school, come back. And then it's, you know, <laughs> whereupon I sit down and I think I'm exhausted already. <laughs> I just, it's just so hectic. Anyway, so once I'm back home, I'll go up, get my cup of coffee and come and sit in my office. And then this is where I just take literally seconds to pause and I do something which you might not believe is pretty witchy, but I know to be a witchy fact. And to take my bell and to ring it. Bell ringing is a call to action. It changes the energy in a room. Our village churches might be denuded of all their congregations, but you will still hear every village church with a set of bells being rung because bell ringing is good fun. And I not just mean church bell ringing, ringing any bells is good fun. But what it does is it's a high vibrational noise and it clears and calls you to action. So you're energetically cleared by it and it will focus me in the task at hand. It might look a bit odd if you're going into the office and sitting there and just going, because it will, you know, if I was sitting in the office, I'd ring them and go, calling, time to work, everyone. And they would possibly think me a little odd, but it wouldn't upset them necessarily. I suspect I'm quite annoying quite a lot, so it might do. Hmm. I work within the magical community, so my magical practice literally happens from the break of dawn to the end of the day, you know, when I go to bed. It's mostly consciously practiced within my life. My work involves doing magical practice. I always, always cast a circle because this helps your focus and intent. It depends on what task I am doing as to what circle. I cast. If you do a circle for a particular task and then start and finish the task in that circle, you will find it will be a particularly fabulously well done task. And that is just a bargain. Now, I appreciate that you might not want to go to your workplace and take out a massive wand, because I do like a big wand myself, and start walking around the office going, I cast this circle. However, circles can be done by simply a simple walking around whilst holding in your brain the words, I cast this circle to help me be focused and creative. So work can be pretty intense sometimes, especially if I'm doing a lot of meetings and I'm really concentrating and I'm really in there with my clients, trying to help them to the best of my ability and, and really enhance their witchcraft. And so this is you know, highly intense and very often draining work. This can be quite, you know, hardcore. And so I do frequently take a step back and look at my phone and, and you can do something as mindless of watching TikTok or playing Candy Crush or something incredibly boomer like that. I'm terrible for Candy Crush and TikTok. I can't help myself. Love them both. But actually, this is a brilliant methodology to help recharge my soul, my spirit. I have been high wired for the last couple of hours, maybe, and I just need to step back take a small breather and I am purposefully manipulating my energy and that is witchcraft. My life is so busy there's very very few moments I have to spare and so by playing Candy Crush I can just reduce and de-stress, de-calm in a couple of minutes and really I'm checking through my aura at that time and just pulling away the necessary stresses out of it so that I can go back to my high wired situations and carry on. I can sort of feel any points or negative impact in my aura and in my energy fields that might need a little bit of uh, tweaking, which means that you can then maybe get out your incense stick and do a quick uh, aura smudge, or if you can't do that in the office, and let's face it, who can, apart from people like me who uh, whose office is my home, then just why not take in your favourite crystals, which you feel would align with recharging your soul and hold them in your hands for a minute. At the end of the day, though, there is one thing that I always do, and that is have a bath. Now, this is a ritual. It is my nighttime ritual. Just because it's my nighttime ritual, though, doesn't mean it's not imbued with a lot of witchcraft practice. 
I have an affinity with the smell of roses. And so therefore, what I really like to do is to have a rose scented bath. However, that may come across and I might use essential oils. I might put rose petals in it or salts or whatever. I'm not just washing the dirt of the day off me. I'm washing the dirt from my aura. And it's a quiet me time of cleansing and bathing. I love it. So those are my five rituals that I do every day. However, these might not appeal to you, these rituals. So here are quick fire rituals to incorporate magical practice into your day to day. And the first one is very easy. It is, of course, light a candle with intent. So should you wish for, say, I need £5,000 to pay my electricity bill, which is what I need at the moment. Excellent, excellent. Love electricity bills. I would light a candle with intent to get that £5,000. The second thing I would suggest you do is a daily five-minute divination session in your preferred divination. Throw some runes, pick a couple of tarot cards, look at some tea leaves. Number four is one of the easiest ones, is go outside. Everybody is recharged by the Mother Earth and being outside, feet on the grass, your head to the sun. Not that there is much at the moment, it's mostly raining here. However, that outside time is really important and I cannot stress that enough. That is magic in practice at its best. If you don't like a dream journal, why not do a witchcraft journal? I have um, a selection actually here of witchcraft journals. I write in them when I have something interesting to report, normally about my witchcraft life. And so I would suggest that you try that because it's great fun to read on the train. So I would like to know what your top daily witchcraft practice is and let me know in the comments below because we all learn from each other and you might have a much better idea than the ones I've given you here. So I look forward to reading them. Otherwise, don't forget my cover meeting is coming up next week. So go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherall for all the details. Uh, we've got a couple of new Patreon members this month and so I'm looking forward to seeing you there. And please don't forget to like and subscribe and I look forward so much to seeing you all next week.